Welcome back to Killer Shrew Fan's Spooktacular Toy Reviews. Rebor sure has a thing for dinosaur corpses. We've already taken a look at the dismembered remains of the Tenontosaurus and dead T-Rex bites the dust, and today we're going to round out the Rebor Corpse Trio with this, the Fallen Queen Triceratops Corpse. Released in 2015 as Rebor's first official Triceratops and dead dinosaur sculpt, this piece was meant to be part of another three-part diorama set that incorporated Rebor's second official release, the much maligned King T-Rex. A male Triceratops named King Trident was promised as the final piece of the set, and a sculpture appears to have been completed, but the goalpost for the project and its release has kept moving, leaving the set incomplete for the past six years. You know you're in rough shape when my six-year late review comes out before the next piece of the puzzle. But speaking of the review, how does the model hold up on its own, and is it honestly worth tracking down even if King Trident will never be released? Well, let's find out. As always, we'll do a quick overview of the packaging. It's the standard Rebor presentation with the skeletal diagram of the dead Triceratops adorning the front of the box. You've got the species indicator, the title Fallen Queen, and 135th scale note above the silhouette there, and the Rebor logo can be found in the lower corner opposite the title. The back of the box features the usual Rebor catalog with the five other figures that they had released up until this point, including the highly controversial Utyrannus and King Rex, Windhunter Utah Raptor, Ceratosaurus Savage, and Acrocanthosaurus Hercules. And boy, is it ever sad that this is the first official review I've done of any of those figures. But yeah, that's it when it comes to the packaging of the figure. I always love the presentation and finish of Rebor's packaging, and although their techniques have changed over the years, I'm glad that this has stayed relatively consistent. But getting into the figure itself, there you have got the Fallen Queen lying prone on the base, and something immediately noteworthy is that unlike other Rebor figures that come with bases, this is just one solid piece. You cannot remove the Triceratops from the base. Depending on how you look at it, that could be a negative or a positive thing. Personally, not sure how it could be a positive. I like to be able to remove my figures if the need arises, but I guess you could say it's more stable as one piece for a diorama, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Getting into the sculpt itself, you can see that the Fallen Queen has that hand sculpted feel of many of Rebor's earlier products. The face is adorned with a mixture of scales around the animal's flaring nostrils, wrinkles around the beak, and crosshatch leathery skin texture on the lower jaw. The beak and horns have been nicely textured, and you can see that the horns themselves have that forward and slightly downward curving look to them, which seems in line with a mature Triceratops specimen. I'm not sure if this is just the Mandela effect, but I swear I've seen a version of this sculpt with a half-broken horn. Does anyone know if that variant actually exists? Or did someone just break theirs and that's what I'm thinking of? Anyway, the scale detail continues up the queen's face, although it is much more subtle as you move away from the snout. You can see that both eyes have been sculpted in a clenched shut position, and there is just the barest hint of shrink wrapping across the face of this figure. The frill itself is studded with three lines of epicipital horns that run around the top perimeter of the frill, while dividing the face of the frill into four different sections. Once we move to the back of the head, you can see it is still covered in scales of varying shapes and sizes, but once you hit the midsection, the texture becomes predominantly wrinkles and striations across the board. You may be able to pick out a couple of scales in there, but they're not nearly as defined as the rest of the skin details, and don't really seem to reflect our understanding of Triceratops integument, lacking the trademark shape and nipple-like growths. This model was released in 2015, 13 years after the discovery of Lane the Triceratops and its preserved skin impressions, so I have a hard time believing the knowledge wasn't publicly available at the time of this piece's creation. Still, it was the early days of Rebor and their sculpt work has greatly improved since, so I'll give them a mulligan with this one. Plus, from what I can tell with King Trident, it looks as though they have course corrected with that piece. 
As far as the rest of the detail work on this model goes, the way they've handled the buckling skin and tension lines on the exposed side is quite well done. You can see how the flesh is folding up against the base of the tail as the leg is pulled away from the midsection and pushed up against the tail. Rebor have also executed that pulling skin look on the torso quite well as the arm and leg fall in opposite directions to each other. All of the muscle tones in the limbs appear to have been handled nicely and I like the look of the feet. It's hard to tell if they reflect our understanding of ceratopsian feet given how curled up they are and the fact that they just seem to sort of blend into the ground but from what I can see they look well sculpted with some nice weathered brown nails and even the soles of the feet have been addressed with pads and palm lines. So barring the more rudimentary style sculpt work and lack of accurate integument I actually do think this is a pretty good looking triceratops model especially for Rebor who at the time was making some pretty heavily stylized and largely very inaccurate models. When you look at the big picture, I'd say it's fairly recognizable as a Triceratops and would have a hard time comparing it to the trike of Jurassic Park, which seemed to become a primary focus for Rebor down the line. So this really does strike me as one of their better original creations, especially from their early days. As far as the base itself goes, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Just an uneven and sandy looking surface painted a light brown color. Nothing visually spectacular about it, but... I guess it doesn't have to be. But if you really wanted to spruce it up, some fake moss and Mod Podge would work to add a splash of vegetation to it. Another aspect I love about this figure is the pose. Rebor have managed to capture something that obviously evokes a sense of tragedy and loss while also preserving a sort of power and grace. She isn't sprawled out with her mouth lolling open. Instead, it almost looks like she's simply reclining and at rest, preserving a sense of dignity even in her final final moments and really living up to the title of Fallen Queen. In fact, if you're handy with a brush and are able to fill in the wounds, this could easily work as a resting Triceratops as opposed to a dead one, which I think would be cool to have in your collection. But speaking on the wounds, here's a nice dorsal view of the figure so that you can get a look at what we're dealing with. You can see you've got about four large puckered incisions in the flesh that are just hemorrhaging some very saturated red blood that spills down the neck on both sides and pools on the earth of the base. There is a very light gloss to it, and whereas I think it does the job, I will say it isn't nearly as well done or realistic as the gore work on the previous two corpses, but since this is an earlier figure, I guess that just means Rebor needed some time to really perfect that formula. As far as the rest of the paint job goes, this is the earlier of two variants and my personal favorite of the two. It's a very colorful figure with a gray-blue, almost teal coloration and golden yellow making up a majority of the color scheme. The colors are well blended, look good together, and you even get some visual breakup on the tail in the form of banding stripes. In regards to the size, the total package comes in at around 8 inches long or about 20 and a half centimeters, but the queen herself being somewhat curled up on that space actually measures in closer to... I want to say about 10 inches long or around 25.5 centimeters and then comes in at two and a quarter inches or just under six centimeters off the ground at the top of the frill. Now if we take the high estimate of 30 feet for Triceratops into consideration, that would put this model nicely around that 135 scale range. For size comparisons, we're going to go ahead and bring in some stand-ins for King Trident since Rebor haven't released that figure just yet. First up we have Doyle the Triceratops from PNSO who is definitely vibrant enough to come across as the male figure of the duo and he does look pretty upset to have found his queen like this. Next up here it is with the 2021 Eofauna Triceratops, the cryptic variant and he just looks absolutely distraught over this turn of events, bellowing out his anguish for all the world to hear. And then we have the Safari LTD 2017 Triceratops, still arguably one of the best in recent memories, and he too looks a bit distressed to find what's left of his mate. Then we have the recent Nanmu Triceratops, aka Heavy Lance, and I feel like this is the most tragic looking pairing. Lance looks very confused, as if he doesn't understand what's happened and is holding on to hope that the Fallen Queen will be getting up at any moment. Oh, I made myself sad. 
And then we have the Papo Triceratops, who... Honestly, I can't really even project a reaction on that sculpt. There really isn't much character behind that one. And... Oh god, I might actually cry. Here is the Fallen Queen with the Rebor Scout series Infant Triceratops Hazelnut, and oh my gosh, this is just breaking my heart. She kind of looks like Lance in that she can't process what's happening, why her mother isn't waking up, or what, if anything, she is meant to do. It's just like the Lion King, only with dinosaurs. Mom, you gotta get up. We gotta go home. Okay. I actually think I, I need a minute here. <laughs> Sorry, just a second. <clears throat> uh, for the final Triceratops comparison, here it is with Nanmu's sick Triceratops, which, strangely enough, I actually got before I managed to track down the Fallen Queen here. As you can see, Nanmu's take absolutely dwarfs Rebor's offering in terms of mass, and this just proves my point that Rebor's counterpart looks nothing like a JP trike, which is refreshing. Still recommend that sick Triceratops from Nanmu is a must-have for any JP fan, but I'm getting ahead of myself once again. Wink wink. But whereas I do think this is a good Triceratops model, I also find it a bit sad that it's basically been reduced to a glorified footstool. Yeah, the real reason Rebor even made this figure in the first place was as a fancy stand for their King Rex figure. You can see how the foot curls over the corpse quite nicely and the claws rest in those open wounds, giving the figure much more stability than that old column it came with ever could. As you can see though, the Rex looks a bit too big for this to have been a fair fight, and yeah, like I said, I do find it somewhat disappointing that the Fallen Queen was merely meant to serve as a means to an end for that vastly inferior figure. Like the Deinonychus pack, Acrocanthosaurus and Tenontosaurus carcass, the idea was to be able to mix and match the various sets in order to tell your own unique story with your display. You could focus just on the baby and deceased mother, or you could add in the Rex and have it considering the calf who is unwilling to leave its mother as a little appetizer before the main course. And if we ever get King Trident, you could bring him in to avenge his dead mate and rescue his baby from the terrifying T-Rex. Of course, this is edging into anthropomorphizing territory, but I feel like in order to tell any good story with a dinosaur, a little, a little of that, just a little of that, is often essential. For now, I've used Heavy Lance as a stand-in for Trident. The JP style and accuracies of the King Rex allows that figure to go nicely with Nanmu's offering. And until Reborn get their priorities in check, this is probably your best bet for creating a compatible and complete look for this diorama. If they ever do release a proper trike, then I guess I wouldn't feel as upset about having the Queen just take one for the scene, you know? Anyway, it's a shame that Rebor have largely walked away from this business plan. I'm sure there's a risk involved, certain aspects of the diorama set probably sold better than others, but it still felt like a unique collecting experience that allowed your collection to tell a story. Obviously you can still do that with most pieces, but it seems as though models that are made specifically for each other have largely fallen out of practice. There were other companies that had this sort of storytelling aspect to them, but most of them were expensive statues that were unachievable for the common folk. So it really is a shame that Rebor, an affordable company, has largely walked away from doing it, even though the opportunity is still there. Why not create a juvenile Diplodocus carcass to go with your upcoming Sorophaganax? Or an accurate Velociraptor duo to release alongside your announced Protoceratops corpse? The opportunities are there and waiting, I just wish Rebor would act on them. Of course, that isn't to say the only thing this trike is good for is the Rebor diorama aspect. Like I showed with the other comparisons, it could work with a number of different, more accurate trike figures, and if you're wanting to make your own diorama, PNSO's Wilson makes for a great and much more accurate stand-in for the King Rex, and I imagine Rebor's upcoming Kiss slash Tusk is gonna look absolutely amazing when posed next to this dead trike. Alternatively, you could bring in Bites the Dust and any of the other trikes I showed to tell a story of revenge where the mate rescued the infant and saved the day. Case in point, you can still use this trike in your collection. You don't need the King Rex and King Trident 
for it to work. I'll close with a comparison to the other Reborn corpses I've reviewed this month, and whereas each can be boiled down to being an expensive accessory, I do think they're unique offerings on the market that each have the potential to add a new dimension to your collection. And that was the Rebor Triceratops Fallen Queen. Overall, I really do like this offering from the company. Like the Tenantosaurus Carcass, the level of storytelling you can achieve with it makes for an awesome addition to any collection. And like Bites the Dust, it feels very versatile in what all it could work with. Overall, I do recommend it, especially if you have any of the other figures to pair it with. Even if these models aren't the most accurate, they still provide a window into Rebor's past where these diorama ideas reign supreme and storytelling was a big part of their business model. As far as the present goes, however, like the dinosaurs, it's just a thing of the past. Of course, Rebor being Rebor have teased more deceased dinosaur products, specifically the dead protoceratops I mentioned. Will it ever happen? Well, if it's anything like King Trident, it's a pipe dream. As always, I want to know what you guys think of this figure. Do you own it yet? Are you planning to track it down? What story would you want to tell with this figure? And what other dioramas would you love to see from Rebor or any company, really? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments section below. And thank you for tuning in to today's review. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again for the next one.